Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to the Tim, the Tim and the Jim, Jim show. There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> welcome, everybody. It's so great to be back with y'all. How are you doing, Jim Fuse? I'm doing good. I didn't know that you'd moved to the South with words like y'all, but that's well, what you we know, say it's the Pennsylvania here. accent. So the Pennsylvania accent. Okay. Yes, the Pennsylvania yes. accent. Yes, yeah, down here in uh, Braves country where we're in first place, and uh, oh, yeah, we beat we beat uh, your Mets two out of three games this past weekend. So I was very happy, okay. happy person. I guess it rained a lot in New York um, over the weekend because they had to play doubleheader on Monday because it was so rainy. So, but uh, yeah, it, I noticed that the water was really high here in Pennsylvania at Lake Wall and Pop Pack the other day. It was like really high more than it normally is so let us know what the water level is where you are and the weather we want to know yes yes it's it is spring now right i think but weather the weather has been weird in fact yes. uh there was actually a tornado in virginia beach i don't know if you heard about that which is extremely rare no i didn't and, hear uh, that at all caused some damage yeah it's weird how you like we just happened to catch it on the news on monday and it's like it happened on sunday and it was just like and since I went to college there, it was, you know, I have, I have friends there, but I, I, apparently no one was injured, but there was there was some damage to some structure. So glad that nobody got hurt. And uh, we had a dust storm in Illinois that caused a lot of accidents and there just came out of nowhere, just across the highway. And fortunately, some tragedy there. But, uh, but enough about that, Tim. I'm excited because yeah. today what is we are today? talking about something very exciting your mm -hmm. new book wow cancer right yes it's a pretty book and you so you wrote a you know a collaborative book so today we i wanted to I wanted to dive in and ask you kind of like how did you go about this i mean it seems like uh quite the task and uh very, very proud of you and your team for doing this um thank you Tom. i mean I guess I guess the first thing would be what made you to decide that I, I want to write a book. So I had been wanting to write my cancer story in a book for a while. I started sharing my cancer story in 2021, in June of 2021. And I'd been wanting to do a book, but I'm someone who does not like reading long things or writing long things for that matter. So that's really what was preventing me from from writing a book. Just just the overwhelm of just the idea of having to write my story in a book and how long will it be and just all the and I had also never written in any sort of lengthy format, lengthy format uh my cancer story. I had shared it lots of times on video, but just the idea of sitting down and writing my cancer story was also just overwhelming for me. So what happened was in November at the in-person showing up perspectives on cancer event, this guy named Savio Clemente, and he has a book. He brought his book. Well, that's a big book. It is a big book. He has 35 cancer survivor stories in this book. And he very generous, generously brought this book and donated it to everybody who showed up for the event. And I was looking at his book and I was like, I could do something like this because I would have my cancer story, but I could also include the stories of other cancer survivors, patient supporters who have been guests on the showing up show. And so just a matter, probably like two weeks after the event, I gave myself a little decompression time because anybody who plans an in-person event knows how much work goes into an in-person event. And uh, just a few weeks after that, I started sending emails out to people who have been on the show uh, that I thought their story would really would really work for the book. And so I had invited, I want to say, 20, 21 people to share their stories. And 10 people responded. I don't know if the other people didn't get the email or, or whatever the situation was, uh, but um, these, uh, 10 other people besides myself shared their story 
And, and the reason I chose them really is because they really fit. Like I wanted the tone of the book to be inspirational and hopeful, mm -hmm. but I also wanted it to be real and honest. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think, I think you did a really good job on that. I mean, uh, will there be a sequel? You know, it's so funny because yesterday I was just starting to make a list of people I want to invite uh, to be in the second volume of the book. And somebody actually emailed or messaged me on LinkedIn this morning who has been a guest on the show who wasn't in the first volume, but said, if you're doing a second volume, I would love to share my cancer story in the book. And his connection to cancer is that his daughter was diagnosed with leukemia when she was really little. She's doing great mm -hmm. now. Uh, but I actually met him at PodFest. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I, I, I could think of some people I think would be great for, for volume two. I'll have to see if I can connect them with you. Um, one one yeah, is a good, good friend of mine, his daughter, who I think I told you about her before. She had, a, I think it was a Hodgkin's and was able to overcome it. I think awesome. I got that right. And, uh, but yeah, it happened to her when she was in college. Right. And so, but now she's, uh, work, she's become a nurse and she's, you know, working with, uh, with the, with the kids, because that was something that she really, you know, connected with when she was going through that. And I, and I think it, it changed her from the perspective of, you know, how it impacted her life and what direction she wanted to take it. Right. Cause she realized yeah. she wanted to help people in that where I think before that wasn't maybe her, her thought. So, it, you know, and I think what you're doing with not only the book, but with your show is, is definitely doing that as well. So I think that's good. So what would you say were the biggest challenges in, I thought you were going to start out with the biggest opportunities, Jim. Oh no. I, I like challenges <laughs> first. Let's go. We're, we're going right at it. What are the biggest challenges, Tim, in, uh, in writing a collaborative book? Yeah. So, uh, so for me, the biggest challenge was actually writing my cancer story. Mm. Um, that was because, like I said before, I had never written my, I had written my story for a blog post once. Uh, but this was a little bit longer. I think I wrote about 3000 words in the book. And uh, it just made me reflect a lot on my cancer journey. Mm -hmm. Um. So that would be the 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 biggest challenging thing for me. And then after that, I would say uh, I knew nothing about the self-publishing process uh, five months ago. I think that's when I started this process was five, five six months ago. And so definitely shout out to Veronica Jeans, mm. the Shopify queen, because she yeah. really helped me uh, learn the self-publishing process and showed me you know, how, how to do all the things in Amazon and, and more. So, um, yeah, so I would say for me, the biggest thing was can't writing my story. Uh, and then, and then just, it wasn't really a challenge, but just learning the whole self, you know, the whole publishing process is something I didn't know before. So would you say is it, I mean, well, one self publishing aside from the time that you spend, which, you know, you can't necessarily put a price on that. Did it cost money to self-publish through Amazon or was it more just getting it all put together? I mean, and I guess if you wanted to hire an editor or things like that, that might've cost you, but you know, was it, right. I mean, can you do it for free? Can you self-publish for free? Yeah. So you can definitely self-publish for free. Uh, Amazon takes a cut. It's a different cut depending on Kindle or paperback or whatever version, but uh, there really is no, direct costs joy mm -hmm. my wife and andrea sanchez helped to pub to edit the book i edited the book as well between the three of us we we all edited the book um i purchased a program uh called vellum v-e-l-l-u-m mm -hmm. and that helps to with the formatting of the book it automatically creates a table of contents for the book it identifies where all the chapters are and and gives you a few different options in terms of uh, formats and thing like things like that. That's about two hundred fifty dollars, but it formats both the print book and the uh, the ebook version as well. Okay, and and can you use that now for future books or? So was that a one time cost for Vellum? 
yeah, it's a one-time cost. Uh, Vellum only works on Mac, just so you know. Okay. Uh, and it's an application that you download onto your computer. Okay. Um, but it's very easy to use and and definitely worth the definitely worth the investment. Right. Very um, cool. Very cool. And only, uh, sorry. yeah. And, and so so now you know. And and if you're not folks, you can now follow Tim on Amazon because he's an Amazon author. I I started following him. I don't know if you got a notification you. you know a little bit ago that i had followed you on amazon that oh, sounds kind of creepy have to check it out yeah so a, a good creepy though <laughs> <laughs> well because then i guess it'll tell me when you come out with another book and uh be interesting what else you can the do pressure, well, now Jim, that you have an pressure. author page <laughs> you're now you're a published author so so congratulations um Thank okay you. so we so we talked about challenges and since you kind of uh, laid it out earlier that you're really wanting me to ask you was what are the opportunities that writing a collaborative book has done for you, Tim? Yeah. So, so writing a collaborative book, it definitely strengthens your relationships with the other authors you invite to be in the book. Um, so all the people who have been in the book have been on the show. So, you know, I've held pre-interviews with them. They've been on the show they uh, some of the people who uh, who are authors in the book also still and continuously have been showing up for the show every week. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, we had a, a book launch party not that long ago, and doing that really, you know, brought us all together. Uh, a good number of the authors were able to show up for that. So during the book launch party, I asked three questions. I said, what is your connection to cancer? I said, uh, you know, share a little bit about what you wrote in the book, not giving everything away. And then what has the experience been like for you writing your cancer story and have you done it before? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the second, the second opportunity is really building that sense of community among all the authors. Um, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing I've noticed is that more people have been connecting with me on LinkedIn, whether it's cancer survivors, cancer patients, even people like in the medical, in the like medical professionals or mm -hmm. nonprofit folks, um, more so have been connecting or reaching out on LinkedIn than, than have before. So it definitely raises your visibility and I think just makes you more, um, I don't know what the word is. Maybe legitimate. Oh, yes, you know, like, yeah. I could see it's yeah. It's a credibility. It's a credibility thing right. for sure. I could I could definitely see that. Now, um, as interesting as having a conversation with Mike Alton last week. Um, have you thought about speaking on this now? Have you thought about maybe becoming a speaker on your cancer journey? Like maybe coming up with some sort of a keynote that's focused on that. Yeah, I've definitely thought about it. And I actually attended a workshop that Erica Campbell, my co-host on Showing Up, recently held as part of a leadership program that she's involved in. And the, the program was all about vision. What is your vision? And she wanted us to come up with, I think within 24 hours after the event, what was something that we wanted to accomplish, you know, as part of our vision. And so the thing that I want to do is I want to speak more about my my cancer story at in person virtual too, but especially in person cancer conferences events, uh, especially where I could get in front of cancer patients, mm -hmm. um, survivors and supporters as well. But with the focus on on the cancer story and and encouraging others to share their stories as well, right. That's, that's, that's awesome. Now, have you, um, so I guess, so you've got, you've got the book, you've, you've got this, this group of people that was, uh, you know, and, and you're seeing, you're seeing business grow. Um, what, um, I guess I would say, what are the, the, the top three things that you feel like have, um, you've, you've gained from this experience? The top three things. I would say 
like I said before about the idea of becoming more credible, mm -hmm. that definitely happens when you publish a book. Um, increasing relationships with people, having more conversations with people as a result of the book, um, that kind of thing. Uh, three, three, huh, Jim? <laughs> Can't just be one. It's got to be three. <laughs> wow, you're really putting the pressure on today. Uh, the third thing I would say is just, um, for me, getting back to writing. I'm such a video guy, which I, I, video is my top choice always, but having the opportunity to write my story, uh, was unique, um, and just made me reflect a lot on my, on my journey and, um, yeah, just writing is, and I, and I used to be, I used to work at newspapers and I started out as a reporter and, and then working on copy desks and newspapers, but I, I hadn't really written anything of length in a long while. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it was good to, to be able to get back to writing and, uh, and what better way than to, to share your own story. True. True. Now, have you uh, have you considered uh, an audible version of the book? I have considered it. And one person did actually ask me about an audible version. The thing I would need to figure out is like I could read my chapter. Right. But all the other people who are in the book, uh, would they want to read their chapter? I know you can hire voice actors to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I know people who have done that. Um, so it's yeah, definitely like, something I mean, to you know, to hear Tim's son's whatever. story in the vo voice of Samuel L. Jackson, that could be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> or of Jim Fuse, the voice actor. Well, you know, you know, actually, our friend uh, Kara Marie uh, Lady is now a voice actor. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to her. Congratulations to her. Yes. So maybe maybe she could do all your female parts of the book. Maybe. Wow, oh, that's yeah, so that's interesting because I know I know sometimes that's you know that becomes the thing because if like somebody's got to read it and I think it's got to be done a certain way with the audio, you know, you can't just you know throw really bad audio together and say, oh, I did my reading. No, I could see where that could be a challenge um, for people, and so yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I know I would love to listen to a book like this, like when I'm driving in the car, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a huge reader. I mean, the book is only about 80 pages long, so it's not a huge read. Um, right. But, Catherine, Catherine said her husband is dramatic. Is that what it says? Are you saying your husband is a voice actor? Does he want to? He's a dramatic reader. A dramatic reader. <laughs> well, shout out to your husband. Yeah, maybe he wants to dramatically read read my book. Oh, that I mean, reminds me. So, so Catherine Lang, did you see D. Scott Smith um, last week? He he uh, he was in town. He was on his way on a on a journey to Tennessee, and then eventually, I think he made his way back to uh, to Oregon. But yeah, we actually had um, we had breakfast in. Uh, in Atlanta, he he stayed overnight, and we met at the Battery, and went to Goldberg's, and even got a picture with the uh, with the ring. And uh, so, yeah, so that was neat to see D. Scott Smith in person for the first time That's since awesome. social media marketing world, I think, twenty nineteen, which was been um, a while. Yes, been a while. So, yeah, and uh, back a couple weeks, they've got the. Um, the global uh, tea break. So you, you should, if you can make it, Tim, you should try to check it out. It's uh, yeah, Friday, the third Friday of the month at 10 a.m. It's a Zoom call. Catherine is usually there. Oh, she, you cooked him breakfast. Wow. <laughs> now I'm jealous. I'm, I'm jealous that uh, he got cooked breakfast. So, but that, yeah. So yeah, he yes. did. He, uh, he, he flew, rented a car, and then uh, I guess he flew back. So. You, any anything is possible which reminds me tim we've got our big uh third well, fifth anniversary coming up in august we have to figure out if we're going to do anything different for that we do for sure 
for sure. Yeah. I think we should definitely do something different. I think we should celebrate. Celebrate, yes. Yeah. Yes. Fun vibes for sure. There you go. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a good idea. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, quite, quite the, uh, so now, now that you've gotten that book under your belt, do you have the itch to, to write more? Well, I'm planning on doing a second volume of the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone had reached out this morning on LinkedIn to me and, and asked who has been a guest on the show. And I met him at PodFest when, uh, when we were in PodFest gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I definitely want to, to do another, another book. I mean, something else I've been thinking about is I tend to surround myself with people, which I love doing. Obviously, Tim and Jim show, mm -hmm. Perspectives on Cancer. The book has the photo of everyone on the cover. But at some point, I would like to write a book that that was just my book. Just I don't know Tim. what it would be. The Just, just Tim. Tim The Just Tim book. That would be That's, the name of the book. That would be just the name Tim. of the book. Yes. I don't know what it would what be about. What is it like to be Just Tim? <laughs> that could be the headline. Just Just Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Um, per perspectives on sonisms. Oh, son it, son it. Jim, what are son it? What is a sonism? Can you give me it's, an example? It's uh, it's something that you would say like, uh, I don't know what what's one of the things you used to always say uh, all the time. Um, um, well, I know you like to use, but I, I don't know if it's your credit or uh, Stefan Kaplan's is B fam. Is it? Is a yeah, son. he came up with that brother yeah. from another mother. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, I'm sure you have sonisms. We just have to figure oh, out. Oh, I'm they sure. Are. <laughs> well, you have that. You have this, right? Yeah. The Tim. Yes. The Tim. Yes. The That's Tim. a sonism. The Tim right? dance. Nobody can take that away from you. Um, no. Yeah, and you're lucky that we're on your streamyard because otherwise I could bring the GIF in and. But ah. <laughs> I think we need an updated GIF. That one was how many years ago now? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. It has been a while. Yeah. I guess. Well, that's that's your homework then. Maybe maybe you can There's get Christine then. Gritman to do some updated GIFs for you before she flies across the ocean to live uh, live in a foreign land and uh, yeah, her family. Which that that's uh, sounds exciting. You know, I think Definitely. I don't. I mean, I could see visiting places for like a long period of time as as me and uh, my bride get older, but I don't know that I would like want to stay somewhere else that long. Um, you know, I think you, yeah. you know you you would miss certain. I I would miss certain things. I mean, I, I, it's it, it's great to be adventurous though. I think we definitely want to oh, travel totally. more. Yeah, same here. Yep. Same here. I'd even love to live somewhere else at some point. I don't think you mean you want to get away the from the turkeys and the bears and the woods. Well, and... you know, there are those advantages. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you yeah. want to go someplace warmer or do you want to? Mm, not really. You like change the seasons? Yeah, that's that's fine. I'd love to. It's so funny because and let us know if you want to move and where you would move to because we right. want to know Catherine do you want to move somewhere at some point and where do you where does Catherine live do you know she lives in Alabama she's not too far away what I think Alabama? she's not too far from Huntsville if I'm correct Catherine okay. you can correct me if I'm wrong but I didn't think you're too far from Huntsville which is you know where where they do all this the uh, they do a lot of space things there oh maybe you want to be an astronaut Jim it was it was interesting though I was reading an article in the wall street journal online edition about there are lots of people probably to Catherine's uh chagrin moving to alabama because it's cheaper than florida ah and they're finding that there's you know they've got beaches there on the gulf and you know you can get some nice places and uh kind of a slower thing you know so as much as everybody's i guess because so many people have moved to florida even though there's yeah. no state income tax, it has become quite the expensive place. Ah. Yes. Yes. 
There she yeah, an hour away from the Space and Rocket Center. Wow. That's, very cool. That's that's a very cool. Yeah. But yeah. uh yeah, so Tim, Tim, this has been very interesting. If you haven't, folks, order the book. Tim, make sure you put your your link in the the chats for people so they can order it. Yes. And uh, you know, really, really proud of you. Now, you know, now the pressure's on me to to write a book. Um yeah, I mean, when's your I guess I could out, use then? I could use Chat GPT to help me start it, but I don't think I would have it just be the book. I have seen some people are starting to do that, and uh, which I guess I guess is kind of a final thought. I don't know if you heard about this. It's 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 fascinating. I'll just say it's fascinating to me because especially of what we do now. So, if you did not hear, I guess it's the Writers Guild that does all the Hollywood writing is on strike. And yes. so that means a lot of the shows that we watch, especially like say, well, I don't necessarily watch them because we're usually watching other stuff. But say uh, as an example, your late night talk shows and that they're basically done because their writers aren't working. And I just I, I found it fascinating. They obviously they want more money, which I'm not saying they they don't deserve it, because um, I saw something about like when you take inflation into account, they're their wages are actually down over the last so however so many years and they're not necessarily getting to share in i guess the revenue streams and some of that is i think because of the streaming right i think the way things happen now yes. with streaming i don't know that the revenue is there like you you know like maybe before there was ad revenue like you see on television but you know we don't i don't watch ads on amazon or netflix even though i think they've been talking about coming out with it but what it made me think about, right, let's go back to Tim's opportunity thing, is that you have now even, now more than ever, that's a sonism. Um, Definitely. That you could potentially now have your own show. And, you know, if you're putting it on YouTube or whatever, I mean, you can even still, you know, yeah, there's Roku TV and all these things. And, oh, and Amazon's now come out with a thing called, I think, uh, Freeview. That's an app that you can watch shows for free. Oh. Wow. Like even some of the stuff they had on Prime before. Um, but I just see that there's now, right, there's more opportunity for people to start to create their own original content. And so as much as I think this thing will get settled, it, it's it's that whole thing, Right. We've had a show for almost, you know, five years, you know, four and a half plus years. The, the opportunity is there. The barrier entry is not, you know, like it used to be where you can have a show that provides value to an audience and that will people will come back and watch again and again. And you don't have to be a member of the, you know, the Actors Guild and all these other things. So, so I mean, yeah. it's interesting. I'm sure there'll be people that'll, you know throw things at my monitor because i i said that but it's just you know i mean you look at what happened in the industry you worked in before yeah right look at the newspaper industry and you know unfortunately there's now a lot of people that used to do what you do that no longer have a job because things change that part of their concern is artificial intelligence but i think it's one of those things where in one aspect, the train has left the station. It's a matter of how much can you get the conductor to keep the train in control, right? I, I don't think yeah. that you can put it. It's not going to go back into the box, right? No, it, definitely not. But I do think there are opportunities because while I do think some jobs will be lost as a result of, of AI, I mean humans are still necessary to to use the ai tools you know right. to create the content or images or perform whatever action you know whatever the thing is with ai um so while there's definitely there's definitely challenges to it i think there's there's opportunities as well do you agree right to right well and and i think i think to your point too is you know there there are some you know fields right whether it's you know 
and, and you know software engineering but even stuff like you know the roger wakefields of the world the plumbers the electricians carpenters ai is not going to replace that and i i almost right. wonder sometimes it's like people don't want to that and and trust me that is hard work mm -hmm. um i have a lot of respect for people that go into that field but you know it's like i feel like sometimes people don't want to do that like oh well that's you know I don't have to work yeah. hard to do that. I want, I want this, you know, desk job where I just type on my keyboard. And I think, I think yeah. that's really, it's a mindset thing because the reality is, and I think we have both been a part of this is continuously learning what's next. What can I do? Right. I mean, even with video editing, there is software that can do it to a point, but you still need that human factor right you still got to oh, have somebody sure. that can under understand that and i think um so i think i think that's part of it and, and we you know we're all not going to want want to read the same you know humanless voidless uh entertainmentless thing that right. got spit out by a computer because it's just not it's just not there yet um and it's hard to say that it'll ever be there i mean i know it's kind of creepy right you got the we could we could turn ourselves into like AI uh, avatar type things that would talk on a video. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if that's something that I'm ever going to, to, uh, to jump into. Oh, and look, Kara Marie must've heard us. Uh, her her ears must've been burning. Uh, yes. We were me. talking about your, <laughs> your voice acting uh, career that is, has started is so happy for you. Uh, Maybe maybe you need to come on the show and talk to us about that sometime here soon. We'd love to hear about that journey because I think there may be people that would be interested in that. I know I'm I'm fascinated about oh, it. Definitely. I've been meaning to okay. uh, to reach out to her because I think the last time we had her on, we were talking with TikTok. Yes, yeah, and and I know there's still people ticking and talking. Um, there are many, yes. but uh, but yeah, so but yeah, de definitely definitely a lot of you know uh interesting things going on and uh i guess is uh what would what would you say i think it was i think confucians said uh you know or or they say what is like a chinese proverb it's like a curse like may you live in interesting times well we are <laughs> that's for we sure. are definitely yes. living in interesting times um oh awesome yeah so i'll say i'll send you the uh the invite link uh kara get you Get you back on here if you're not uh, not too busy because I know you're always busy because she's also got these two rug rats that she's always managing. But uh, I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. And uh, yeah, so we'll we'll definitely be back next week. It, it's May. It's it's nice and warm. It's for me. It's you know my favorite time of year. Oh, you know I actually did. Tim, have you played pickleball yet? No, did you? I did play pickleball. My my bride uh, talked me into it, and I actually kind of liked it. I'm I'm not going to say that I'm going to go crazy about it, but I at least I learned how to play, and uh, so it will give me something else to do. But I was I was sore from doing it. It's you know because I've never mm. been a big tennis person, um, but pickleball yeah. was wasn't bad. I mean, you're hitting hitting a wiffle ball and. Uh, Great to see you, Katie Simpson. Hi, Katie. Um, but yeah, so definitely, definitely uh, something to think about that you might enjoy. You know, if you're uh, wanting to get get a little exercise, I'm sure it's it's starting to grow up. It's it's going crazy everywhere. You know, it's uh, pickleball. Pickleball. Yeah, it's the latest trend. The latest pickleball. trend, right? Trending, trending on Reddit and all the other platforms. Yes. <laughs> All right. So thanks. Thanks, everyone. And uh, don't forget, get Tim's book and also check out his uh, I think you have a site for it, don't you, Tim? The uh, your next event coming up in end yes. of September. Yeah, you can go to perspectives on cancer dot com to find out about the event, the book, all the things perspectives on cancer. Um, the event is coming up September 30th and October 1st in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, 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 Scranton. I think it's Wonton? Scranton. I think I've always said it's Scranton. I want Chinese food now. Scranton. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. 
if you're a cancer patient, survivor, supporter, uh, the the theme for the event is education and inspiration for healing, hope, and resilience this year. So uh, definitely check it out. Would love to would love to see you in person. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, we'll see you guys next week on the Tim and Jim show. Take care. Take care.